Hi, this is Ray Fugit with Downstream Technologies. Today we're going to look at the interaction of Allegro and ORCAD PCB Editor in Downstream's CAM350 product. First, I'll export ODB++ from PCB Editor. We'll import that into CAM350. We'll run analysis on it. And if we find any issues, we'll cross-probe those problems back in to PCB Editor. To export ODB++ from PCB Editor, File Export, ODB++, some settings here that you can modify, but in most cases, uh, for our purposes, we can just use the uh, default settings here. Once it has translated successfully, should tell us here. We will now load this design into CAM350. To load an ODB++ file into CAM350, just import ODB++, point towards the TGZ file that was created. CAM350 will load it. The advantage of loading ODB++, of course, is it's an intelligent database as opposed to Gerber files. So it has things like net information, and it has part information. We'll now run the CAM350 analysis tool streams on this design. So I will add a new stream here. And streams is just another name for checklist. Uh, basically, I can add any of these items into my checklist and run specific analysis on these types of layers or I can even do a netless compare or a design compare on the, this design. What I'm going to do now though is load a previously created checklist and we'll just go ahead and kick this off and then take a look at the results when it's done. If there are any problems found on the design it'll take us to this results tab over here and we can review the problems found. Clicking on any particular item takes us to that item. We can annotate that item, add notes to it if we're passing information around in a design group. And we can simply scroll through these types of errors and take a look at uh, the errors themselves, decide whether it's something we want to uh, fix back in the CAD tool or not. Here's an example of a acid trap or a solder sliver. Um, most of those errors were one, two errors. Uh, sometimes you'll get a bunch of errors and rather than scrolling through them it might be more advantageous to use the charting capabilities to actually look at them as a group. So if I put the mouse over here you see that all 136 of these errors are the same value of five and a half. Now I might decide that that's sufficient. I can select all of them by clicking on the chart and I can right click and delete those so I can quickly validate hundreds of errors as opposed to walking through each one of them. Now I'm going to use the cross probing capabilities to take the errors back into PCB Editor. So I will load up PCB Editor along with CAM350 here. and I will connect both tools to each other. Once they're connected, of course I can turn layers on and off and view the corresponding layer in the other tool, but our real purpose here was to look at the analysis errors and look at them in both tools. So I can click on that error and see it both in CAM350 and PCB Editor at the same time. Uh, same with the tracked pad errors, the acid traps, or even a, a group of errors like the tie width errors we have here and view those on a uh, negative plane in this case. So this is how CAM350 and PCB Editor interact with each other. Uh, the purpose of course is that we want to run our analysis on the manufacturing tools we're sending to fabrication. 
but we don't want to fix them in the cam editor, in this case cam 350, we want to fix them back in the PCB editor and then regenerate the manufacturing tools. This way we don't have a disconnect between uh, what's available in manufacturing and what's actually in the CAD database. Thank you for your time.